Um, okay, well, we get to start in about you know 60 seconds. So for people that are just joining us, grab your piece of paper and and uh, you know a, a pencil. You might want to take some notes, or you'll be typing along like crazy. Um, we'll introduce who the panelists are and then get going because a half an hour is going to fly by. I know this. Um, I just talked to um, Kelly, who's running all these events, and I said, okay, so what do you think about slides, no slides? You know, should we just keep talking? She's like, oh, no, just talk. With three people and 30 minutes, and knowing the three of us, we could really get rolling on stuff. 30 minutes would fly by, that's for sure, because we I know we all got something to say. One of the things that I was going to say is there are some people that aren't on the screen, and I think that the first thing about networking, Kathy, is if you're going to be with us, you should get in the box and, and, and uh, get in the play, right? I'm sure you're going to say that. Exactly. You should, um, request to use the audio and the, um, the video during the, the chat sessions. Yes. So for sure, because part of it is just showing up and letting people see you and, and know what's going on. Um, so, but I'm not, I am not sure. So if I let, so Nancy, I just clicked on you and I don't know if then Nancy can talk or there, there's Nancy. Nancy, yeah, down here. You're running the more. yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is supposed to be that way, but yeah. I think it's maybe just supposed to be us right yeah. here because we do have eight people watching. Correct. So Nancy, sorry, I just took you out. You can let us know what you're thinking or what you've got in the chat session um, is one of the ways to go. So let's get started. I'm Kathy Paper. Um, it just says you in my little sidebar, and I don't know how the screen shows up for all of you, but joining me is Lori Spies, the CEO of Office Centers with six locations around the Twin Cities area and an amazing seven now. Oh my goodness, you just keep growing. An amazing entrepreneur and Ben Teese, an owner of uh, School Marketing, uh, terrific at Google, search, uh, all things internet related to really grow your business. Uh, I've known Ben, boy, I think I've known you just slightly mm -hmm. under Lori. I remember the first speech that I went to um, where you were talking about Google and I was like, who is this guy? He's talking about Google and then he's also talking about the Vikings and I'm learning so much and this is great. And then our paths collided again a, a year later through Office Center. So I think it's really awesome that we're all together here to share at Twin Cities Startup Week today. So the week has just started. I have heard last night there were people driving by to pick up their t-shirts at the brewery. Um, I wasn't able to go. I don't know if you two were able to stop by or not. But Lori had said this earlier, just showing up, that's one of the pieces. And we'll hit on some highlights with how do you design your network and why is it important to your business today? But I just want to say to those, there's a thousand attendees, okay? A thousand attendees at Twin Cities Startup Week. This is their seventh year of doing this. The first virtual ever, thanks to COVID-19. But, um, you know, a thousand people, you could potentially make five to 500 really good contacts if you do this right at Startup Week. That's what's so powerful about this. So today we're gonna to talk about how to design your scrum. I've got my handy dandy rugby ball here. Uh, scrum has only nine people in it. Um, somebody technical might tell me there are 10, it depends how you count, whatever. But in my mind, it's let's design your scrum, your inner circle. So we're gonna talk about why networking is so important. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Lori, let's start with you. Of Tell me why is a network so important to business? Well, I think the connections you make are what spurs you and get you to the next level. When I even look at this group, I know that we all met during networking of some type. And I think that as we went on with many of the, we host events and do a lot of different kinds of things. And, I, and as you said before, it was right here in my, my notes, just show up is really important. And I think that especially in COVID and we're doing a lot of these Zoom networkings, you need to make sure that your face is present, that your brand is present. You can see that I've got some of my branding from my company behind me and all of the things that you have, you never know what's gonna happen with networking. Whether, as you said, we're gonna make meet five people, one great connection could be the one that sets your business to the next level. So always show up with enthusiasm, keep an open mind, be willing to share different uh, aspects about your business and help other people. And um, I'm gonna tell you, because this is what I'm gonna say, it's always where the magic happens, right? 
<laughs> networking. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. What do you think? What, what do you think in the years that you've been in business? Why is networking so important? Yeah, well, to be honest with you, it's been the, you know, again, foundation of my business. And to be honest with you, I think it, most people, if you were to look at your business, networking has been the foundation of it. It, you know, it not only helps you, you know, I think a lot of times people go into networking thinking like, hey, how can I grow my business from a sales perspective? And that's obviously, you know, again, important, but there's so many other things, you know, referral partners, just being able to be connected with people, maybe in your same industry or even not in your same industry that you can rely on for advice advice, for emotional support, for just saying, okay, hey, I had this issue happen to me with a customer. How did you guys deal with it? You know what I mean? Like, because again, we're kind of all in this together in that, you know, again, either being business owners or the head of marketing or the head of a company or whatever it may be. And so obviously you need your network to rely on. But I also think it's just important to realize that it's not just about sales. It's about sometimes that internal growth and internal um, help and just advice um, and just maturation that you can kind of see. Excellent. It's, it's really great because a lot of times people are at different levels in their business. So you might be able to help someone who's in a startup and there's somebody who's in um, a different life cycle of their business and we kind of all help each other through. So you're right. It's not just about making more sales, but sometimes it's that support that small businesses need when we're on our own and we just don't know who do we call or ask or who's been through who's been through COVID before. Listen, we're all learning at the same rate this time around. But for anyone, I think that that is um, um, really valid reason to get out and make some great connections. Right. And to, and to show up. So Ben, I like to, you said it's important for, for not just the business and the referral, but also the emotional pieces or those connections. So when I started my business, you know, 12 years ago, after leaving Best Buy, it was, who do you talk to? And at first you're thinking, oh, I got to get sales. I got to get sales. But really your network is about building those alliances and relationships around you, people that you want to do business with. So I did a survey of 500 people and found that, you know, the minute it gets past meeting one person, everybody gets nervous. Everybody gets nervous and doesn't really like networking. So whether it's finding where can you join that community, where can you meet those people, where can you show up? So again, I'm going to challenge all of you that you that are on this call right now is put something in the chat. What's a question you have about networking so Lori and Ben and I can deliver the most to you? Plus, I want to see if the technology is is working. So, um, uh, Lori, let's go to our second question of sort of how have you built your network through the years? You know, it, it, it's a great question. But as you had said, it's one person making one connection. And then where does that next connection go? You know, if I met Ben, then Ben might introduce me to, or Ben does introduce me to some other people. <laughs> Just like with you, Kathy, you know what? Every person is another connector. And it's funny to say that you do it one um, one person at a time, one individual connection at a time, but that's really some of your best work is done one-on-one. -on -one. How do you build that trust? How do you build um, a strong connection where people will give you referrals? Um, you know, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of your one on one individual time to really be able to start it so that you can give it to a whole group and deliver. We do it at, at my company, um, office centers in Minneapolis. We have seven locations. We run programs all the time so that um, we just make sure that we have consistency in calendars and so that you're always showing up. People know where they can find you. And that's one of the um uh, one of the things that I think makes it successful because um, come uh, June 1st, I'm going to be in business for 40 years, believe it or not. Wow. So where do you start from the beginning? I barely, I barely remember. So yes, the plan is awesome. 40 years and one person at a time. So all of you startups out there, people that are in your business or service providers, it's one person at a time and it's that connection. And yes, Lori, Ben, and I all know each other through this. So, Ben, I'm curious, how have you how have you built your business when you first went out on your own? Yeah. Well, so, um, again, actually, this is probably my, like, the question I was looking most forward to because I think one interesting thing about me is, you know, again, with School Marketing, we're, you know, I came from the Google atmosphere. You know, I worked at Google, and then after that, um, and so, you know, again, being the whole 
atmosphere and just doing digital marketing is a lot of times people are surprised that the majority of my network, even previously and even today, is actually built offline. And then I like to say I nurture it online. And so, you know, again, like I like to build, you know, I think the best networks are built still offline where you're actually going to go to networking meetings. You're going to set up one to ones. That's literally how I started my company. I left Google. I downloaded my contact list and I set up a ton of one to ones just trying to contact these individuals that I had at the previous company, explaining my new, you know, again, what I was starting, everything like that. And then since then, you know, again, we've had great partnerships where we speak in front of people. We do workshops with Lori at Office Center. We do just, you know, networking groups, network associations, just networking events. And the idea is try to create as many relationships offline. And then again, nurture them online. If that's via email, if that's, you know, LinkedIn, obviously not saying I'm never going to see them again. But I think one thing that especially I see this not even just with younger people, but just in today's world or whatever, that um, I think it's hard to do, you know I mean, to create and have everything be virtual. And again, I know obviously Zoom has helped us even just kind of bridge that a little bit, but I will say that I think anyone that's listening, anyone, you know, again, you guys can probably attest to this as well, is there is that difference between the, you know, again, the virtual relationship and an offline relationship. And so I think that there's definitely some correspondence there. And I think there's definitely some over overlap. And there's probably going to be more than we've ever seen previously, because we're all getting a little bit more used to this. But I will say that I think the most effective relationships that I've had and built for my company have been offline and then using online to nurture them. Oh, I love that. You know, one I of the things that. I was going to say too, Kathy, is Ben is really great at following up. He is great at giving people advice and information and not doing a hard sell. You know, some of the things that I think have made you really good at what you do are things that you just continue in your life. And so many people are so protective of the gifts that they give or what it is that they have. And you're so open and so generous that, you know, I just see success is gonna follow you. Kathy, the same thing with you, always willing to help, always willing to help someone else. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, here's one of the, yeah, one of the things, and Ben, you got a shout out too from, if you're looking at the chat from, from Mary oh, Tucker, Mary. you know, the master and Kitty, thank you so much for the comments and thank you for sponsoring um, this event and talking about, you know, that professional kind of questions or connections. I think it is a piece of you, you want to show up, you also want to be consistent. And then that sort of how you built it, I think, you know, and, and Lori and Ben, why I connected you, oh, we could have the master. Harvey McKay is just calling me right now. And I could <laughs> on the phone, I swear it's not a prompt, but I could be like, okay, Harvey, come on. Let's put you on the, let's put you on the call right now. So the ultimate networker, we're going to put him in there. And if he calls back again, then I'm really going to have to go grab that. But you know, it's, are you in the networking for the long haul? When you're starting your business, what I think happens is you're all about you and you're so excited about you and what can you gain? And you really want to be about how can it be about we? And why I'd say this designing your rugby scrum is the scrum is stronger together. So who is in your network that you're building this together? And if you're a startup, it could be, you know, is your accountant rooting for you? Is your lawyer? Is your marketing partner? Is where you office out of? You know, there are so many places you could choose to co-work, but choosing office centers is you're buying into that community, that connections of people. Um, so that's why having a network is really important because your business will come from a lot of referrals as you're getting that starting momentum. Well, yeah. And also, Kathy, I'd like to go off of kind of what Lori said. And I think this even maybe potentially can even help the gentleman. Um, I believe it's Gaji that um, even commented there, too, is I think one thing that um, and I really appreciate the shout out, Lori, and the sentiment there. And I think what, we re what we've really tried to do, and I think it's important to kind of, um, you know, again, pass along is be authentic. I think sometimes, you know, again, people think that they're smarter than somebody else when they go into a networking meeting. And again, like if you're just looking for sales, if you're looking for this, you know, again, just be authentic with it. You know, again, people can see through that. People can kind of, you know, look at, uh, you know, again, and identify that type of stuff. And so I think one of the things that we really try to do to be is, again, hey, we're going to be ourselves, but be authentic. And so, you know, again, kind of going off of what Gaji was kind of asking, where he's saying, how would you recommend making initial outreach? 
um, when you don't know many people is I would honestly say it starts with one. You know, again, as Lori, as you know this, as you know, I, I knew this is it's, you know, again, it's literally reaching out to the people that you do know and authentically telling them the situation of this is what I'm trying to build. Don't try and hide things. If you're trying to no. sell something, then say it. But, you know, I mean, you may not have as much success for obvious reasons. But my thing is, is be up front. And so, Gaji, what I would just say is, you know, literally, you've got to know somebody that's in the region or the new industry that you're in or start asking around. But just be authentic, be up front. And I guarantee you more doors will open because of that. The other thing is, is I noticed that someone was talking about getting started. There are uh, thousands of places that you can get started. Go on Meetup, go on some of the places. And there are there are groups that are happening all throughout the Twin Cities and the world now because you can um, be in uh, Zoom calls with people from all over the country and all over the world. So, you know, you've got a lot to choose from. My thing is try to experiment, see what groups work best for you. There's no reason why you can't go to one and say, you know what, I don't think this one is for me, but authentically show up in any group that you attend. A lot of times I would say, make sure that you have your face on the screen, that you do some type of a background that makes it seem like, you know, you're at work and possibly if you can add branding, all the better. Um, be an active participant. So many people I've got been to a lot of Zoom meetings for, and I never have heard them speak. They just are sitting back or they're looming back or they don't even put their face on the screen. Um, but those are some of the things. And when you find a good group, get in and get down and just, like I said, we say just show up because that's when magic happens. You never know where that next great contact is going to come from. And I would add to, I love those advice of authentic and I think too, at the start, you can also, you can volunteer and you can go where your hobbies and passions are. So Ben, I know is into football. Lori behind you has the punching bag, the, the boxing glove, you know, find out what people are into and find out what you're into and join that, join a softball team. Again, COVID is different, but there are still ways to find people. So on LinkedIn, I'm in a group for tennis so that I meet some people that professionally I can talk about that with it um, and, and other things like that. Who wants to take the, um, the question K Kitty raised about people, young people that are starting in their career? Does anyone want to take that one? Yeah, Kathy, I was wondering, I don't know how Hopin records these, but maybe do we want to uh, ask the question just in case the text uh, doesn't come through if people watch this later? Yep. So the question is from Kitty Hart for $200, could you provide <laughs> advice to young people who are just starting their careers? I talk to many who need know they need to start building their networks, but are sheepish about connecting with professionals because they feel they have nothing of value to provide yet. Oh, that's so not true, huh, Ben? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we all need you know, people who are seasoned. We need young, fresh minds. We're looking for it. Get into a great group. That's what I would say. You know, everybody has something to share. And those of you who have old minds, make sure you keep your minds open to those brand new people who are coming in because they've got good things to share. Well, and what I'd like to add is I was always kind of the young one. Now I'm getting, you know, I've been in business now for eight years. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm getting a little bit older and, and I'm seeing some of this or I have other people kind of that are younger coming to me. And so one thing that I would say kind of Kitty to go after your question, uh, you know, too, is that, um, I, you know, again, it's okay to, you know, again, feel like you don't maybe have any value to provide in that because, again, I'll, I'll be honest, you do because you have a different perspective. Right. But also, I think you'd be surprised at how many people that are older are willing to and want to actually help. I was actually blown away when I got into business and I had so many people when I just, you know, again, started telling them, again, being authentic, saying, hey, I am starting my own business. And obviously people are going to understand it may not have as much now to offer them, but I think you'd be blown away at how many people are going to come out of the woodwork or hand up helping hand to kind of be like, Hey, let me help you understand this. Let me help you get connected to this person. Maybe let me help you by purchasing this, whatever it may be, the advice, the connections. So I think one thing that I would really stress to, you know, again, people that are younger or even maybe someone that's older, that's switching careers, kind of, you know, what the question was previously, and you feel like you don't have much in there is again be authentic and it's okay to say that and there are so many groups out here that will actually want to help you um just because it's something we all know we had that feeling before so i think that's another important thing to kind of remember and i think the best the best networking groups are the ones that don't have like minds in them i like the fact that they can have 
diversity in um, the people in the group, in the work that they do, in their age groups, all of those things add to a much more interesting workspace. That's the way I look at it with office centers anyway. And I think that with, with a lot of things, when you see new and young people coming in, that's our next um, customer for us, our next member. And so what is it that's going to drive them in their businesses? And what are we going to be able to learn from one another? It's a, it's really a very magical situation. I am, you know, after 40 years, I still love what I do. Isn't that crazy? No. Um, one more thing I'd like to add too, that I think it's important for both sides and again, older, younger, experienced, non-experienced right. to realize too, is sometimes the expectations. What I mean by that is, you know, not to go too much into stereotypes, but I think we all can agree that usually, you know, again, older professionals, you know, again, like a lot more face-to-face, -face, offline, shaking hands and stuff like that. And we a lot of times have younger generations who will want to use a little bit more technology. And so I think again, you know, again, Laura's kind of talking, blending those together but I think it's important for, for instance, like younger people to realize that and hey, we might have to change a little bit and maybe get out of our comfort zone. And, you know, I mean, there and also as an older individual, more experienced individual, realizing some of the change that's happening and having us change as well. So I think sometimes that gets lost too is the ways of communication uh, that we're so used to. We also have to kind of remember and realize that if we're trying to communicate with someone that may be different from an age or experience standpoint, they may be having different expectations and we may have to critique our way of delivery to potentially make that even more fruitful. Yeah, good point. So, okay, so I'm going to go back to my little rugby mentality on this uh, with that, you know, sports have certain rules for it and networking doesn't have formalized rules, but the more you sort of, you know, your networking process, meaning, you know, are you, when people come to me and they say, well, I'd love to meet with you for an hour and I want to tell you about what I'm working on. You know, I may be more reluctant to give away an hour of my time versus somebody that says, I got your name from so-and-so. I'd love to talk to you for 10 minutes. Could I tell you a little bit of what I'm doing? I'm seeking your advice. I need something. So the more you can be a little bit tighter with what you're going for and also realize who you're connecting with that you may be, you know, you may be asking for too much because I think learning your process and some of that is trial and error as you're building those relationships so i had when i first started networking had read a book about networking and you should know something about the person and i kept making references i was in their office i talked about you know that they had gone to princeton that they had gone to princeton they had gone to princeton i must have mentioned it five times and finally the gentleman looks at me and says you know what i know you know i went to princeton i didn't really enjoy my experience there so boom there i learned my lesson of you know, I was overusing my my process a little bit too much. But um, so one uh, final question we have is, what are you doing to kind of grow more relationships or help you drive growth? What do you do, to, uh, Lori and Ben, to kind of keep growing those those relationships? Well, I would say kind of a Laura to reiterate what she said earlier is to show up or to create your own opportunity to show up. So I think that Laura and I both do that and not saying everyone is in that position or whatever. But so, for instance, you know, again, I create my own events. Uh, Lori creates her own events. But the other thing, too, is just showing up. And that can be virtually. I know I've talked a lot about being offline. And again, I know that's kind of changing. But I think to even say even online, Lori was talking about there is making sure your face is seen, you know, just connecting with someone with on LinkedIn and then just kind of texting them probably is going to be the most fruitful relationship if we've never necessarily seen them. Now, again, I know that's not always the case. And so I, but I think that the whole thing is just showing up and having, you know, again, some type of communication, even if you're creating those or you're looking out and joining those. And I know we had a question in the chat of, you know, again, do we look for these clubs or do we have some recommendations? And Lori and I both put in some, you know, again, there of, you know, again, local organizations, local associations. Um, Lori does great events. And so I think it's just important you have to kind of sometimes search for them, but those are sometimes the best ones to find opportunities so you can show up. You know, and the other thing is the chamber has good events. You know, and a lot of them they're consistently posted. Um, but you wouldn't need to really assess what works for you. Number one, what's the time frame that works best for you? Some people like morning, evening, after work events. You know, so look look to see does the time work for you? 
Can you commit to this type of uh, uh, monthly or weekly, whatever it's going to be? So you want to consistently show up if it's the one that you want to um, really promote and really work towards. So, you know, consistency is good and all of those other kinds of things. But try a lot of things, you know, see what sticks. So I also, you know, I was going to answer this one too, because I found early on in building my business, I was all over the place, networking in a million places, you went to everything, talked to everyone, maybe wasn't as strategic uh, with my networking. So thus I got into kind of creating that impact 100, who are my 100 relationships and it's diverse. It's got people that are reciprocal. It's got people whose reputation I trust and admire. They trust mine. Um, it's got uh, one of our questions is here is when you network or you join something, should you be kind of focused on one thing or can you be kind of general? I have both. So I'm in groups that are just purely that, you know, something that I'm passionate about or I volunteer with something that I'm passionate about to keep my network networking skills up because often it's easier to network in something that's your hobby. But then when I'm going to a chamber event where I know it's just business, I'm more relaxed at talking about, Hey, what are you doing? My elevator speech is tight. I know how to describe it. I offer training and coaching groups. You know, I know how to work with that. So, so partly as you grow your business, who's in your impact 100 or those people so that they will tell you, Hey, well, you're showing up. You know, Lori and I have a good enough relationship. We've given each other feedback to say, how do you make yourself better? And you need people like that around you, as Ben was saying, because, you know, at the end of the day, COVID, I'm sure, has been challenging um, for businesses that are established to start up right now is an interesting time. You want those people that will say, hey, when you show up, you need to have X, Y and Z prepared. So being prepared, you know, showing why you're credible, those types of things. Um, so I noticed, that, I noticed that Craig said something about he wants something that isn't too focused. And on the other hand, with me, I like a focused group because if I'm going to spend time away from um, whether it's my family and friends and everything else, I want to make sure that I'm going to a group that isn't going to be total fluff. You know, I want to make sure that those are going to be some of the people who are bringing it to the table the, with the same type of energy and enthusiasm that m me or someone within my group, we're going to support that. So you have to decide what it is that is your successful group looks like. And all of us can have groups that are, are uh, very different from one another that you feel you can focus or not feel focused on, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one, want to give one final tip, Lori and Ben? Just one, any anything possible? Yeah, I think my final tip is where we started out. Just show up. You don't know what's going to happen unless you get out. And when it's, when we have to start getting together, get up, get dressed, and get out. Because I think that anybody who's working from home, one of your number one challenges is just that um, – you know, lack of having people around and people have isolation. And studies have shown that if you're out and you're among people, your business will grow. Your business will impact your bottom line. It will impact your sales. Um, you need to start somewhere, but make a goal for you. I'm, I'm going to get out one time this week, whether it's in a Zoom call or something else. Start small and then just show up. Excellent. And I'm going to add yeah. wait, one sec, Ben. I'm going to add. So, all of you that are in the chat, you can put your picture in there. So if you'll notice, Kitty has her picture in there. I couldn't find my picture, so I put the little rugby ball in there. In your profile, if you're going to be in Startup Week for the next two weeks, put your picture in there. Put your LinkedIn profile on there or make it easy for people to connect with you. Ben, what, what were you going to say? Um, yeah, so to kind of go off what I said before, too, and again, I know things are changing kind of with Zoom, but in a sense that, you know, creating relationships offline or potentially even via Zoom where it's face to face at least, and then nurturing them online, you know, again, I, um, I think sometimes that we strive, you know, because it's easier, which I'll admit, but again, easier is usually not always the best path for growing or doing anything. So I would kind of say to try to, you know, look at, it, especially as things um, get back and up and go back to whatever our new normal is or whatever, is that, you know, again, kind of creating those relationships offline and then nurturing them online. Excellent. Excellent. So I would add to, I think also to really keep your network diverse. You know, so often we we network with, you know, people that are our same age, gender, race, everything, you know, be diverse, really be intentional of, 
you know, can I have somebody that's, you know, 60 or 70 in my network? Can I have somebody that's 20 in my network? Can I have, you know, all different genders raised? Keeping that diversity is is really helpful. And I think that's a, um, a key point that I'd add with it. So, okay, so I'm gonna just summarize and say really quickly and, and Ben and Lori to, to wrap up is one, networking is super important. You build your business using your network and start with one relationship at a time. So I challenge each of you to go build one more. Love the, you know, start with the offline and online. How can you build those relationships? And offline, when you're in a Zoom call and it's lots of people, it could be as easy as saying, hey, your profile looks interesting. Could we talk for 10 minutes? Um, I heard also to following up and giving advice, being, you know, giving of some of your knowledge and also being authentic. I think sometimes we get so like scripted. We're like, oh my God, now I'm networking. Here's my little networking thing. And you want to just show up. And then of course, having some diversity and nurturing it. And um, that's what we've got. So any final comments, Lori Men? No, but I think it's been a fun morning. I look forward to doing something with both of you. And I hope that the people in the um, who've been watching us have gotten some information because I think we're all pretty good networkers, right? We, yeah. we are, we are. So feel, feel free if you want, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Kathy Paper with the C, Kathy with the C, and um, and let us know what we can do. And we'll we'll look forward to seeing everybody start up and blossom and grow or be part of our uh, awesome Twin Cities ecosystem. So thanks everybody. And thanks for hosting and sponsoring everyone. Thanks for having us. Yep, bye.